Now let's try to solve part A. So in order to solve part A, we're going to first consider this expression over here. So f of x times the direct delta function of cx dx. And then we're going to split this up into, into two cases. So the first case is when c is larger than 0. So let's deal with this case first. So for this case, I'm going to do uh, substitution. So I'm going to let y be equal to cx. And in such a case, you can see that dy dx is equal to c. And then you can see that dy 1 over c dy is equal to dx. And so this expression over here, this integral, will become so f of x instead of x. I'm going to get y over c. And the bounds, they still go from negative infinity to positive infinity because c is positive. And then if you substitute negative infinity into x, you just get negative infinity for y. If you substitute infinity for a uh, positive infinity for x, you just get positive infinity for y. So that's why the bounds remain the same. And the f of x becomes this expression. And then the direct delta function becomes delta of y. And the dx becomes 1 over c dy. And then you can see that pulling the 1 over c out, you get an expression that looks like this. And so now I'm going to use the uh, this formula over here. So we call, uh, we've explained this several times before, I'm not going to go, th go through this again, but we know that for this integral over here, this is ac actually equal to f of a. So in such a case, you can see that in this case, a is going to be equal to 0. So this entire integral is just going to be equal to f of 0. So there we have it. This is how you evaluate this integral. And then we're going to do the same thing for the case where c is smaller than 0. So when c is smaller than 0, once again we're going to do the same substitution. And then, so when you do the substitution, f of x becomes f of y over c. Your direct delta function becomes delta of y. Your dx becomes 1 over c dy. And then this time the bounds will be different because uh, this time around our c is going to be smaller than 0. And then just uh, remind yourself that uh, y is equal to cx. And then since this time c is smaller than 0, when x is negative infinity, when x is negative infinity, since c is a negative number, you're going to get two negative numbers multiplied together. So that's going to be positive. So the lower bound is going to be positive infinity. And then for the upper bound, when x is equal, equal to positive infinity, you have positive infinity multiplied by a negative number. So that would give you negative infinity. And uh, I can pull a negative sign outside of the integral to just flip the bounds to go from negative infinity to positive infinity. And then I can also pull the 1 over c to the outside. And then you can see that this time around on the inside, we have the same exact expression as we had before. So this integral is the exact same as this integral, which we know is equal to f of 0. So we have negative 1 over c f of 0. And a c is a negative number, right? If you put a negative number over here, this is going to turn this expression into a positive number. So effectively, what's going on is that this is going to be the absolute value of c. And then for convenience sake, uh, even though this is already positive, I'm just going to add the uh, absolute value sign here as well to make it consistent. So you can see that for this integral, what you're going to get, no matter if c is positive or negative, your result is going to be equal to 1 over the absolute value of c, f of 0. So let's summarize this for the time being. So we know that at this point, that this integral over here, f of x, delta of c, x, dx, is going to be equal to 1 over the absolute value of c, f of 0. And then now we're going to consider a different integral. So we're going to consider this integral over here. So what is this integral going to be equal to? So of course I can pull the absolute value of c outside of the integral. So you have this expression over here. And then in order to evaluate this, I'm just going to use uh, this formula again. And then you can see that in this case, a is equal to 0. So this whole thing is just going to be equal to f of 0. And so you can see that both of these integrals, they give you the same result. and then by the rule that is given to us over here, by this rule over here, since the two integrals give us the same result, that means our uh, these two functions are going to be identical. 
and going back to this question that means uh, this expression which is going to be the d1 over here so this is the d1 of x will be equal to this expression which is going to be the d2 of x so this is the d2 of x so what this means is that the direct delta function of cx is equal to 1 over the absolute value of c times the direct delta function so this is how you prove it